Today I'm going to give you four tips for writing prompts that will have more predictable and high quality responses. We all know that the quality of the outputs are determined by how good your inputs are, how good your prompts are. So let's dive into the four tips to improve your prompts. Number one, be specific. If you want specific responses, you need to give clear, specific directions in your prompt. If you aren't writing a novel, you're not trying to be beautiful, you don't get extra points for style, you're trying to give clear instructions. A really good metaphor that I like to think of is, uh, you know, teaching a pretty smart but totally unexperienced college intern what to do. They can follow directions, but they don't have enough experience to be able to infer what you want them to do. So unless you specifically spell out something, they're not going to do it. So let's look at a prompt. Maybe you're making a chatbot for the uh, website Trout.com and you want it to help users navigate the site. You could say something like, tell the user about Trout.com, tell them about phishing, it'd be really fun to talk to. Or you could be a little bit more specific. Um, tell the user about Trout.com. Answer all their questions about phishing and tie in your answers to web pages on Trout.com. Encourage the user to explore the service by describing its many services and benefits, blah, 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 right? So the more specific you are, the better your prompt will perform. And that goes directly into point number two. Create sections to your prompt. Give it a structure. Now this isn't just for the prompt, this is for you. It'll be way easier to go back and edit your prompt and navigate through it and know where to add stuff and take stuff out if it actually has sections and a structure. And also for your team. If a team member comes in, you're working on a team together on prompts, if yours is written like an abstract poem, they're going to have no idea how to fix things and change things. So let's look at an example. So here we have the famous uh, Trout.com phishing uh, chatbot. And here we give it a personality section, a links to give out section, a how to talk. And we kind of describe what we want the chatbot to do in each section. Now the way I've designated these sections with these hashtags, that's just me. This isn't a coding language. There's no rules about how to do that. This is just how I've done it. You can make it something like personality, like that. But I've decided to do it like this. And also the uh, sections I've determined here are just my choices. You don't have to define any of these things. In the personality, I just told it like how I want it to behave. For the specific links I want to try to give to people, I put out a links give out section. I give it a section on how to talk. Your speech should be simple, plain spoken English, ninth grade level, don't use big words, explain technical terms, and I give it some goals. And again, you can kind of invent any of these you want. You can make any sorts of things. Which leads us to the next tip. Give rules. A lot of times, in addition to these sections, it's very good to explicitly spell out things you want it to do and don't want it to do. So let's add one of these here. Doing this, you can do it in any way, but it's as simple as just saying rules to follow. And I'm telling it things I want the chatbot to do, like give out links as formatted as hyperlinks and mentioning and also, you know, mentioning specific lakes and fishing spots. And then importantly, I'm also telling things I don't want it to do do not mention other fishing brands. This is only for trout.com. We don't want to hear about salmon.com or tuna.com or swordfish.com. Only trout.com. Do not use big words. Do not give out links that are not included in the links to give out section. Now, this might seem a little complicated, but again, this is not a coding language. This is all just natural language. So imagine you're giving directions to a uh, college intern and you're giving them a Google Doc you could say, do not give out links that are not included in the links to give out section, and they would be able, smart enough to look at this and look up here and be like, ah, here are the links I should give out. Do not give out links that are not in there. And you can customize these rules to whatever you want. You can add more. You can take them away. You can make them very specific. Generally, um, as you add more and more and more rules, it's going to be a little harder for the AI to follow all of them. So I would recommend uh, putting these, making these as few as possible. And if there are rules that it's not following, try to spell out the rule in two different ways. So you might say, do not use big words, and also, do not use words um, above a ninth grade level, right? So sometimes it's helpful to just spell out these rules in more than one way. So moving on to our fourth tip, 
give examples. If you have a very particular type of output in mind and you want it formatted in a very particular way, well, it's probably a good idea to explicitly tell the AI how you want it to be formatted. And the best way to do this is to actually literally give it examples. So just like we've done in the rest of the prompt, we're just gonna add another section. And we'll call this example outputs. Or you could just call it examples. You could be like how outputs should be formatted. Whatever you wanna call it. Because again, this is just natural language prompting. It's not a coding language. We're just giving the AI rules the same way we would give a pretty smart college intern. So if we're happy with how output should be formatted, we can just throw in this. All the output should be short, include a link in relevant and follow this formatting. Here's an example. We'll say the coast of LA is a great place to catch sculpin. We offer fishing trips to a variety of locations and you can see all the options at this. Now, this is kind of saying that we want it to start with a uh, sentence. You know, you can catch sculpin off the coast of LA and then include a link. Then if you're using some platforms like Pickaxe, you can also add stuff like training dialogue. And what training dialogue is, is it's just, you know, example inputs and outputs. So example exchanges. So here we can have the example query like, where can I fish for sculpin? If the user asks that, maybe we want it to say something like um, this. This is how we should answer. And we can keep adding more and more of these. So hopefully that's been some good advice and some good tips on how to get better, more predictable, and higher quality outputs via prompts from chatbots. There's a ton more of advice and tips I could give you, but this is just four. And I think we've introduced some good principles here, like how to structure a prompt and adding sections. If you have any questions or specific prompts you want help with, feel free to put them in the comments. I would love to go through them. I find this really fun. And for more videos on no-code AI and prompting and prompt design, give our channel a follow. Thanks.